Hi, welcome back to Mathematical Logic. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about adequacy and forms. Let's talk about truth function. A truth function of n arguments is defined to be a function that takes n inputs or n arguments, and the arguments uh, and values uh, can only be true or false. So, for example, uh, say you have a function uh, that has uh, the following inputs x1 to xn. So these are n inputs. These are uh, essentially Boolean variables that take on either true or false or these are uh, uh, propositional symbols uh, and so this uh, this function is denoted by f of x1 to xn so it's a function of n variables uh, so for example the negation function the negation operation uh, is a function that takes one input so x1 and it simply negate it so t true becomes false false becomes true so uh, the the output the function output is this last column right here and so uh, basically it's just a truth function, it's just a function that can only take um, boolean variables and whose output is also uh, uh, true or false and so here's the and uh, function it takes two input and just and the, the input so the last uh, column is the output of that and so every sentence containing n uh, letters or n symbols uh, generates a corresponding truth function of n arguments. So for example, here's a sentence of uh, three variables and uh, so this function, this sentence represents a function of three three variables, a, b, c. And the output of the function is the out, is the, uh, the value of, of this sentence. And so in logical equivalent forms, generate the same truth function. So you have multiple forms that are equivalent, then that means they have the, uh, then they have the same truth function. In other words, if they have the same truth table, then they're the same truth function. So one question that we want to ask is that uh, whether we can get all truth functions uh, by using only the, the connectives that we've seen in the last video. In other words, if I have only or, and, not, uh, conditional, and biconditional, is that enough to generate all possible truth functions. Uh, so it turns out that uh, that this is true, and um, we're gonna. Uh, in fact, we're gonna have something even better. Uh, in other words, we we can, uh, if given any truth function, we can actually generate that truth function by only using um, some of them and not all of the connectives. Uh, for example, we can use three connectives. If I throw away the conditional and biconditional, the or and and not is actually is enough to generate all truth functions. Uh, and so, so, yeah, we, so we don't, don't need all five of them. So here's the definition. A set of connectives is adequate if it's enough to generate all truth functions. And so this proposition says that uh, this set of three connectives is adequate. So let's rewrite that. The set of connectives, or, and, and not, is adequate. So uh, I think there were we can prove this, but uh, I'm gonna just upload a uh, a proof, uh, the formal proof, uh, on um, on the class website. And uh, as for now, which I think this is the proof is actually just tedious. It's really simple to see uh, how this works by just going through a bunch of examples. So let me actually uh, just show you how this works by doing uh, an example. And it's easy to kind of uh, formalize this uh, with a, a proof. So for example, here's a function of uh, two variables. Again, the claim here is that it doesn't matter what the outputs are for this function. We can always generate this output function by using only the three connectives. So how do I do this? Well, the way I do this is that uh, I'm going to look for, uh, for for all the places where the, you have a, a T and look for those rows. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just uh, generate by using... Um, so, for example, this row has... A, this is a T, so I'm going to... For every variable that has a, a false, I just negate it. And if the variable has a, a, a true input, I leave it alone. And then I'm going to end them together. So let me kind of show you uh, the answer and then see if we can backtrack this. So this uh, output function, I, I'm only going to need uh, th three rows. The three rows have the, the three true values here. So for example, the first row is has a false and T. So notice in here in the first, uh, the first part of the, the function, uh, I negate x1 or a1 in this case it doesn't matter I guess and then uh, this is true so I keep it the same now 
and then the second row, this uh, well, has, the next row that has a T is this one. So this is true, so I keep it the same. So that's A1. This is false, so I negate it, and then I end it. And lastly, uh, this row right here, this is a false, so I negate it. This is also false, so I also negate it, and then I end that. So the final, the final representation of this function is simply uh, you, you end the entire row, again flipping the false and keeping the true, and then you uh, or those rows together. So each of the rows is a, a bunch of ands, and then you combine all of them by a bunch of or. And you kind of see how this works, and the reason why this works is because, well, we have a bunch of or here, so the 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 way for for a bunch of or to to be true is for at least one of them to be true, and so the way we did this is that we kind of uh, treat these three rows as separate cases and kind of set up so that each of them give you a true value, right? We just negate all the false and make it true, and when you add a bunch of true, you get a true value, and these are the three cases that make it true. Uh, the first case is not one of these three, so therefore it will have a false value. And that's how you get this to work. Here's another example, three variables. Again, we look at only the rows that has the true and convert them. So for example, here's this is all true. So we just keep them the same, A1, A2, A3. So this part of the, uh, the uh, this disjunction, this part of, the entire thing is a, a bunch of disjunction. And this part of the disjunction, this disjunct uh, has just adding all of the variables because these are true already. And then the next one is this one, so you want, so you have true, false, true, so that means you keep the first one, you negate the second, you keep the last, and you have, so this part of the formula makes this row be true. And then uh, keep, you keep going, so this part, for example, let's do one more. Uh, false, false, true means that not A1 and not A2 and A3. So this part of the formula makes this row has a true value. And so the four, these four parts makes these four rows have the true value, and anything else that's not uh, one of these will have a false value. So that's how you generate any truth function by using only and, or, and not. So this form, uh, the form that formula we saw earlier, has a special form. You notice that you have a bunch of uh, a, a disjunction of a bunch of conjunction, and so uh, there's a name for this. This is called. Uh, so remember that from the last video, a literal is a proposition symbol or is negation. So a uh, statement is in disjunctive normal form, or DNF, if it is a disjunction of a bunch of disjuncts, each of those disjunct is a conjunction of one or more literals. So again, this is a, a bunch of, is a disjunction uh, of, so these are disjuncts, and each of these disjuncts is a, a conjunction of literals. Okay, so again, I'm doing. I'm uh, recording this during quarantine, so uh, hopefully you don't hear some of the background noise. Uh, but if if you do, then I apologize. Okay, so here's some example of uh, things in disjunctive normal form. Uh, so again, here by a bunch of disjunct, uh, a bunch of conjunction here, and you join them by by um, uh, the a disjunction of all those. A conjunctive normal form is kind of like the opposite. It's simply a conjunction of uh, one or more con conjuncts. Each of those conjuncts is a disjunction of one or more literals. So, for example, right, each of these uh, conjunct is uh, each, these are a bunch of conjuncts, each of which is a, a disjunction of literals. Okay, so uh, so here's a corollary to what we've done. Uh, so again, uh, we're not going to prove that, uh, but you can kind of see how uh, the example can you can formalize that as a as a full proof of this. But having having uh, that proposition, we can get something even better, and that is that in fact you only need uh, three. You you only need two if you pick the right one. And and not by itself is adequate, or and not by itself is adequate. Uh, the conditional and and not is also adequate. And so to prove this, we need some simple but very useful uh, equivalences. A logical equivalences. So the first one is if you not a not, it cancels, you get A again. That's called the double negation elimination. And if you not an an becomes, this is called the Morgan's Law. If you've done programming, you've used this a lot in, in uh, programming. So if you not an and, that becomes, so not A and B is not A or not B. So the not distribute, and then the and becomes an or. Then the other version of this is that 
uh, not an, an or means that you distribute the, the not and then the or becomes an and. So not A or B is not A and not B. Uh, you can you should think about why this works. I mean, it's actually really simple to think about why this works. Okay, so let's actually prove why these uh, sets are adequate. So again, we're assuming that from the previous proposition, not or and and uh, uh, and or and not is adequate. So we use that to prove this. Uh, so to show, for example, that and and not is, is adequate, is enough to show basically that. Uh, so we know we know this is adequate. So to show that we don't need the or. All you have to do is we write the or in terms of and and not. If I can write the or in terms of and and not, I don't need it. It's redundant, and I can throw it away. Um, so that means because because or depends on and and not, I can just get rid of it and still have that uh, uh, that adequacy. So here's how I do. I use De Morgan's law. Uh, again, or can be written in terms of and and not, and and not, and so I can throw away or and use this same expression to replace anything that has an or and then I still preserve adequacy so I don't need this one so again uh, this is De Morgan's law if I distribute this I get A if I distribute this I get an or if I distribute this I get a B so this is the same thing as that okay uh, and then in the same um, yeah so in the same way we can um, show that uh, or and not is adequate by doing the same thing with the other version of De Morgan's law and finally to show that the conditional and not is adequate we just replace um, the or with the conditional. So basically, using this right here, because or and not is adequate, um, I can re if I can replace or with uh, with the conditional and not, then then I've shown that this is also adequate. So we actually have done this in the one of the previous homework. A or B is equivalent to not A implies B. Right? A or B is true if one or the other is true. So if we don't have A, for example. Um, if we have uh, A already, then we're done. If we don't have A, then we should have B. So that's what this says. Yeah, so that shows that uh, uh, adequacy, you you need only two if you pick the right ones. Okay, how about one? Can we have one connective? Is that enough? Well, it turns out that you actually can just have just one. Uh, we don't need, uh, yeah, so let's talk about that. So if I, here, so here's a new connective that we haven't seen before. This is called the joint denial or the NOR. So joint denial is denoted by this uh, symbol. It's so just an upside down arrow. It points are pointing down. Uh, here's a true table for it. Uh, notice that this is a, another another name for this is nor, which is basically combining not with or. So for example, if I do an or and then apply not to it, I get I get this uh, nor. So for example, if I or this, I get true. If I not, I get false. If I or any of these, I get tr uh, any of these row, I get true. I not and not it, I get a, f a false. If I um, or these, I get a false. If I not it, I get a true. So this is the same thing as uh, not or combined. So that's joint called joint denial. This is alternative denial, or uh, also known as NAN. Uh, so basically, not and. So if I and these and then apply not to it, then I get the uh, the NAN operator. Uh, so it turns out that these uh, two operators are actually uh, is uh, adequate by themselves. In other words. Um, so here's the exact proposition. The only binary connectives that alone are adequate for all truth functions is uh, the uh, the NOR and the NAN. So let's actually prove this. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's assume that we have a binary connective. Uh, again, it's a truth function of two variables as a binary connective. Uh, let's say that we that this function is adequate. That this function by by itself can generate all truth functions. Well, suppose that, uh, let's look at this function applied to true true. If this function applied to true true is true, then it's not going to be adequate. Here's why. Uh, so if this connective, uh, given two, two uh, true values, give you a true value, then that means that uh, any sentence consisting of only this connective would have the value of true if all of the propositional symbols are true. Right, because because the output of uh, of this function is true for all true values. If you have a bunch of uh, symbols that are all true, and then combining this multiple times uh, will give you a true value at the end. Uh, but but this implies that the negation not a cannot be defined in terms of h. Uh, so so again, uh, if this function uh, give you only true value if everything is true, 
then that means that you cannot get the negation symbol which which flip the true value to be false so that means that uh, this function has to be false so again if you have a, an adequate binary connective uh, the value of TT uh, for the true and true input has to be a false similarly we can do the same uh, and say that the value of uh, FF input false false has to be true so right now if you have a binary connective that is adequate we have this partial true table the value of TT has to be false the value of false false has to be true now there's only four possibilities left right there's only two uh, places here and there's four possibilities so let's look at um, the two of them is actually we know already if the second and third row is false false or true true then we have exactly the the NOR and the NAND operator we saw previously so the two cases that we that out of the four is basically the two that we know um, and then uh, how can we rule out the other two cases well the other two cases are that uh, whatever is true false well if you have true false here it turns out that this this function is the same thing as not B notice that this column is the same thing as not B the other cases is false true well that case is actually not A if you look at that so these are the other two cases and it's easy to see why these two cases is not enough to generate everything because it's just a negation right? negation of one of the variables uh, and so one way to see that is that if you have let's look at this function uh, the function that takes A and B and make it make it true for all cases of A and B uh, you can see that you can easily check that this function uh, cannot be generated by either not B or not A so basically uh, a function that makes everything true cannot be formed by by either of these so therefore these are not adequate and so the only one that's adequate is is these yeah that's basically it uh, for this lecture and uh, I want to say one last thing is that the the NAND and, and NOR uh, operators are called universal uh, operators sometimes they call universal gates if you talk about like boolean logic or circuit board it turns out, so what that means is that uh, you can actually create a build your own computer using only um, one of those uh, so in fact, you look online, you can find a bunch of websites that, that says, oh, here's an 8-bit computer that uses only the NAND gate, the NAND uh, connector, uh, to build, uh, you know, our truth function. Therefore, be able to do compute, um, be able to do computation with it. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's uh, one side note. Okay, all right, thanks for watching.